LLM or large language model is a powerful type of AI program. LLMs are sophisticated systems, but the concept of LLM is much simpler than you may think. Think of it as a big brain trained on a massive mountain of text. Think books, articles, websites, or even code. This training helps the LLM understand how language works, the relationships between words and even different writing styles. This allows them to process and generate human-like text, translate languages, write different kinds of creative content, and answer your questions in an informative way. LLMs use fancy deep learning techniques like a type of neural network called a transformer. It's like a complex web of connections that can analyze text and learn from it. They are still under development, but they are getting super clever. In this video, we'll briefly look into the history of LLMs, their current role in the AI landscape. I will then walk you through a high-level architecture of LLMs. We'll talk about tokenization, embeddings, and much more, all with clear examples to keep things fun. So let's unlock the secrets of LLMs and see what the future holds for this powerful technology. The Turing test proposed by Alan Turing in 1950 was a radical idea that changed the very essence of intelligence. The question of whether machines can think was too meaningless to deserve a discussion. But Alan Turing proposed a different question. Can a machine fool a human into thinking it's human? In the Turing test, a human evaluator interacts with both a machine and another human through text-based communication. If the evaluator cannot reliably distinguish between the machine and the human, then the machine is said to have passed the test. The quest to pass the Turing test ignited a revolution in the field of artificial intelligence, pushing researchers to develop increasingly sophisticated AI systems capable of human-like communication. But it wasn't about passing a test, it was about understanding the language at its core. The Turing test forced AI researchers to think deeply about the nature of language and how machines could comprehend it. It inspired them to create models that not only generate text but also understand context, semantics, and syntax. And as scientists grappled with the challenges of natural language processing, a new approach emerged, the development of large language models. Now, artificial intelligence or AI has been around longer than you may think. Fields like machine learning, deep learning, computer vision, and robotics have been quietly revolutionizing our lives for decades. From personalized recommendations on YouTube and search engines to fraud detection of credit card transactions, traditional AI is already deeply embedded in everyday experiences. Think of generative AI as an artist of the digital world, creating entirely new things instead of just organizing or categorizing what already exists. It's the G in GPT like large language models. These chatbots can speak and write surprisingly human-like text thanks to their innovative transformer architecture. One example is ChatGPT, an LLM developed by OpenAI that started as an advanced chatbot and has evolved into an impressive language generator. NLP or natural language processing is the backbone of many generative AI tools. By understanding the nuances of human language, these models can not only generate text but also interpret and respond to it, making them invaluable for tasks like machine translation, chatbots, and text summarization. The field of AI is constantly evolving and boundaries between these areas can sometimes blur or shift with new advancements. However, understanding this core relationship between AI, ML, NLP, deep learning, LLMs, and generative AI provides a solid foundation for exploring the exciting world of language processing and its connection to the broader field of AI. Remember those complex webs of connections we called LLMs? Think of them as digital brains, tirelessly analyzing and learning from mountains of text data. This learning empowers them to perform language modeling, a fancy way of saying they can generate text that sounds remarkably human-like and even predicting the next word you might type. For instance, let's say you are writing an email and get stuck on what to say next. An LLM-powered tool could suggest relevant phrases, complete sentences based on your tone, or even craft an entire draft depending on the context. It's like having a personal writing assistant, only much faster and powered by AI. So after watching this Bitemunk video, you start writing a comment this video is like, and the LLM predicts and completes for you. And when you post a comment, how can I learn more about this stuff? I hope the LLM predicts, share the video, and then hit that bite mark subscribe button. Now, large language models or LLMs are incredibly complex systems with many moving parts. While diving deep into the technical details might be overwhelming, understanding their high-level architecture can be helpful. Let's break it down. The journey starts with the input which can be a text, code, or even speech. And this input might be a question you ask, a prompt you provide, or a piece of text you want the LLM to analyze. 
it basically represents the tokenized input text to the model. More on tokenization later. Transformer network is the heart of the LLM, responsible for processing the information. It's a complex neural network with many layers that analyzes the relationships between words and sentences, allowing the LLM to understand the context and meaning. Finally, the LLM generates an output which could be text, code, or even creative format like a poem or song. This output is based on the processed information and the LLM's learned knowledge from training data. Training data is large data sets used to train the model. And LLMs are often fine-tuned on specific tasks or domain to improve their performance in those areas. Now, this is a simplified overview and the specific architecture can vary depending on the LLM. But hopefully this gives you a basic understanding of how these fascinating language models work. We will do a more technical breakdown in future videos, so do subscribe if you are liking it so far. Let's quickly understand the fundamentals of tokens and tokenization. A token is a fundamental unit of input or output from a model. And tokenization is the process of converting text into tokens. For example, in word level tokens, each token represents a whole word. Byte monk can be tokenized into byte and monk. In sub word level tokens, each token can represent a part of a word. And this is useful for handling unknown words or reducing the model's vocabulary size. For example, unbelievable can be tokenized into un, believe, and able. In case of character level tokens, each token represents a single character. For example, subscribe can be tokenized into individual characters like this. Now, byte pair encoding is a hybrid approach that starts with character level tokenization and progressively merges into most frequent pairs of tokens. It needs a separate video of its own, which I'll make in future. And by the way, you can also build your own custom tokenizer. However, a custom tokenizer won't work with a commercial model like ChatGPT, as their tokenization process is tightly integrated with the model. You can, however, still use your custom tokenizer as a pre-processing step before feeding the text to the model. This allows you to tailor the input to your specific needs. One framework that makes this possible is Langchain. But don't worry. We'll dive deeper into that in another video. Now that you understand tokenization, let's talk about embedding, a term that describes converting often textual data into numerical vectors. The closer the meaning of the two words, the closer their embeddings are. For example, if I say, in this video, I'll show you how to build and a language model might predict large language models. Now, if I replace the word show with guide, since they have similar meaning, you don't want your prediction of LLMs to change. So it should continue to predict the same output. So instead of focusing on the patterns in the characters, it must focus on the patterns of meanings, which is why we have embeddings. The closer the meaning of two words, the closer are their embeddings, which is why we also expect synonyms to have embeddings very close to each other. We get the embeddings by initializing them as sequence of integers for every word in that dictionary. We look at the embeddings only and predict the right continuation. Now these embeddings are randomly initialized, so they will most likely produce wrong results in the beginning. After we encounter error in the model, we slightly change the embeddings to increase the probability of predicting the right output. So when we read a lot of text in the self-supervised training, it keeps getting better and better and finally predicts the correct output consistently. Note that this is a straightforward form of vectorization and generally the method used by commercial models are way more complex and there are specific algorithms used to generate embeddings. For example, word to vec is a popular model that generates word embeddings by considering the context in which the words appear. Fast text developed by Facebook, it extends word to vec to consider subword information, making it practical for handling rare words. Elmo or embeddings from language models generates embeddings based on the entire context of a sentence or a phrase. Now that you understand two essential aspects of LLM architecture, tokens and embeddings, in the next video, we'll start by understanding parameters, semantic search, prompting, and also understand what it takes to build LLM from scratch using fine tuning and in-context learning.